Hey everybody, James is talking while it's live. How's it going? This is hi. Greg. <laughs> hi, everybody. Everybody, scream hi, like immediately. Hi. Hi. That's well. I mean, that's more that like worst. what you. Hi. Yeah, Evan. more like what you just did. Hey everybody. Bad savings idea. Sharing. Okay. Well, so how's it going, everyone? This is Greg Brown from the Foundry. Today we have with us Brandon Reddick, um, with his uh, his mic working, which is Mortals. awesome. And uh, we also have James Gard, and James Gard is going to be walking us through the some basics of uh, rigging in Moto and bringing animation into Unity. So something that was re requested, so I wanted to make sure we at least had somebody who knows a lot about it speak to um, our community about how to approach that. Um, we also are going to have a special presentation at the end of this presentation that we've been very tight-lipped about, not telling you what the presentation is supposed to be. And the title, it tells you what it is now, which is um, a special Moto Technology Preview. And so we're going to be showing you some new stuff that is on its way that I think is going to get people um, who are watching this pretty excited. And if you hopped in to watch this, you get to see it before anybody else does. Um, when, when, when Torn may or may not be the only person here. <laughs> Maybe. That would, uh, that, would, that would suck. All right. But, uh, yeah, so let's, uh, let's have a quick chat. So, James. Um, James Gard. What, what, is, what is your background, James? Uh, I guess I'm just a journalist. I've been all over. Um, yeah, I started with 3D Studio Max, then went to Moto since 2002, and I uh, haven't really looked back, even though at my current job I'm using Max, but. You know, it is what it is. But you have a pretty eclectic uh, background in, in the sense that, I mean, since I've known you, you've you've worked on your own games. You've also done nauseating viewport movements with your space mouse, I'm guessing. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll just use a regular yeah. mouse then. <laughs> no, I'm just giving you a hard time. Uh, but you've worked in VFX and you've also yeah. you know, worked in games. Yeah, so uh, I made my own indie games. I think I've made about three of them. Um only one currently has been uh, Unity, and that was actually with this character right here. Um, and then I worked in uh, medical advertising, then I worked in VFX, uh, and then some business-to-business -business advertising, and yeah, I've been all over the place, it seems. Very cool. Brandon, Brandon, you have the list of questions, right? I don't have the list of questions. Oh, questions. Yes. Uh, I do have those special list of extra special questions. I just said special way too many times. Uh, so, James, yeah, it's been a while since we've last spoke. Um, yeah. But, uh, you know, really quick, what made you want to be an artist, like, back in the day? Oh. Yeah, um deep questions. Ooh. Oh, God, I really don't like that question. I remember... <laughs> uh, Mike Seymour asked me that question, and I couldn't answer it. And that really bothered me for the longest time. Uh, I remember his example, everybody said Jurassic Park. And I was like, Jurassic Park, really? I don't know. Uh, I think Hold it was because... Butts. Huh? Hold on to your butts. <laughs> like, if it's like the first thing... I remember Final Fantasy Spirits Within. I saw that movie, and I was like, oh my god, I need to do CG. Even Ooh, though it's warm. It's really... It's... <laughs> you know that quote. <laughs> that was such a bad movie, but, <laughs> but uh, that's the one that kind of got me like, oh wow, like CG is like a, a real thing. Um, and then I think I've always wanted to make like a Super Metroid uh, movie, uh, which you can kind of see my character may or may not be loosely based around that main character inspired we won't talk about that we won't talk about inspired. that. inspired there's nothing wrong with inspiration yeah you know it's funny it's like I've, I've been on a big fizz gig kick recently i keep on sending out video clips of fizz gig screaming his head off because i think it's like the perfect expression of frustration but um how, like I, I just almost have to ask you because I've, I've like watched this movie four times in the past uh past uh past week um what 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 movies affected you early on because for me it was the dark crystal dark crystal had a massive impact on me you know like like as far as what is capable of being achieved in in fantasy storytelling oh um god let me think i remember 2001 a space odyssey that was a crazy movie. I wow, think maybe... wow, you just brought out Kubrick. You just like yeah, threw yeah. that on the table. I'm talking about like puppets, and you're like, let's talk you about Kubrick. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, Kubrick, everybody loves that guy. I mean, his stuff may be a little too long for today's kind of viewers, but 
You know, once I actually, I was waiting for my, my currently ex-girlfriend to get ready, and uh, I was waiting in her living room, and 2001 came on, and she came downstairs when the movie was over with. And that was the only way I could convince her that she actually spent three and a half hours getting ready. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. I was like, time. I watched 2001 A Space Odyssey. Yeah. All right. I mean, brutal. that's a very long movie. <laughs> yes, it is, but it's also I guess it's, you it's could brilliant. Say the uh, process of being in the bathroom was an actual odyssey. So, yeah, well, that's that, that was what I was trying to say to her. <laughs> Sorry, I'm 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 uh, Captain Obvious, or what, what did you call me? I'm like not Captain, but I'm like. Hey, well, you, Captain Tangential. Oh, Captain, Captain Tangent. Tangent. Oh, Captain Tangent. Yeah, also but th that wasn't really a tangent. But anyway, so uh, <laughs> what other questions do we have there, Brandon? Um. So, uh, well, you kind of you kind of ac actually answered a couple of these questions in, in, mm -hmm. in one one answer. Uh, what was the you, you you said that you used Max in the past? Was there any other application that you used before Max, like uh, oh. to get into things like, like okay. your very first three D application? Well, my very first one was three D Studio Max. I think it was like R three or something like that. And then my computer crashed, and I didn't have it anymore. And I ended up with Raydream. And I used, yeah. Do you know? Do you guys know what Ray Dream is? Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, you do. Yeah. It's kind of funny. All right. How I didn't think funny? anybody. Did. I didn't think anybody did. <laughs> Just mock me. Huh? Uh, yeah. So I used that for like maybe two or three years. I'm not sure why it stuck out with so long. And then I tried Strata 3D, and then I ended up back with Max, and I used that for quite a while, and then moved over to Moto. Because I thought Moto 202 was a sculpting application, uh, a competitor to Mudbox and ZBrush. But I was wrong. <laughs> but it allowed you to completely reinvent how you model from yes. the ground up. Exactly. Yes, and I mean, especially back in the 202 days. It was a very good mistake. It's had a positive impact, obviously, because now you've already you know worked at... Uh, many different studios and, and visual effects and in games and you know your your experience kind of speaks for itself as far as what what you pulled off so far. One of the things I like about what you've uh, you've been doing in Moto is you know you were one of the people who early on started using ACS along with Unity, and uh, it's something that we got a lot a lot of questions on these days. So every yeah. time we got to ask a question like that, I'm like we need to grab James and have him talk about his experience there because I mean you you probably started doing that back uh, right when ACS came out, right? Yeah, I think I was actually bugging him on the beta even before it like, came out. Um, I was harassing Lucas. Yeah, that guy's awesome. He's yeah. it, it, like he's, he really he's is. one of those devs who's like, hey, can you give me feedback? And like, he will not accept the, well, it's nice answer. You know what I mean? He's yeah. like, no, 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 no. Tell me what sucks about this. I want to improve yeah. it. And if you're on the fence about getting it, I mean, there's, there's no reason not to get it. It's a really, really, really good... Um, auto character setup system. Yeah, especially with uh, with ACS2, the second version that's yep. recently or recent dishly come out. But Number uh, two is yeah. really sweet. And that's another person who started out making plugins for us, and now is actually one of our our dedicated developers, much like James O'Hare. And so we keep on snatching up that talent that's out there in, in our community. I think Lucas actually had experience from doing the ACS uh, kits for for Lightweight back in the day too. Oh, did he? Yeah, I yeah. believe so. I could be wrong. And so hopefully I didn't just totally put my foot in my mouth. But I think he did. And so, you know, it's interesting to see how, you know, um, how these types of tools come over from experience people had previously. All right. Well, let's go ahead and uh, take a look at what you have to show us. I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing you, the way that you deal with uh, uh, Moto and Unity. And, uh, you know, just to speak to the people out there who are watching this. Um, this will be very useful if you use Unity, and stay tuned at the end because you're going to see even more awesome stuff that will make this even better. So. True, true. Real quick, Greg, just to mm -hmm. chime in, we've got some people who are having some buffering issues. Um, uh, definitely try to restart the uh, restart the page if you can. Sometimes that helps with uh, with the streams. Uh, but we are, you know, we are trying to sort of sort of shift around some things here in the stream. But uh, but yeah, just just bear with us, please. And if there are any audio issues or video issues, please let us know. Okay. Yep, thank you. All right, so let's see what you have, James. All right. Um, so let's see what we're trying to accomplish today. So basically, I went ahead and put together a bunch of stuff last night for... So you can see I can go through a mechanism. Um, so this is Unity 5.0. Um, this is the newest. Um, actually, I don't think it's the newest and greatest. 
but um, basically it's going to be the same. Whatever you download today will be really close to this. Um, so this is Mechanem. This is where you'd be dumping all your animations into and where you'd be setting up scripts to kind of um, dictate how this flow works. Um, so I can make a transition um, all the way down to here. And you can kind of see it run through the different cycles. Actually, I may have not set it up right. Um, yeah. Well, let's just do everything from scratch, and I'll show you how, you got, how to bring everything into here. Um, let me clear out a bunch of the stuff I have. Save the scene. I'm going to kill this. Um, let's kill... All right, yeah, so I'm killing a bunch of files. I'll show you how to set up a master as well. Um, okay, so now I have a project that's completely empty, and I'm going to start bringing in stuff from Modo into Unity. I'm going to open up Idle. Not to all, it's a bunch of miscellaneous textures. All right, so here in Modo, I have an animation of an idol. But what I want to first start off is create a, um, a master file for Unity to kind of grab at and then append all the animations to later on instead of having a bunch of unique um, assets in there. So to start off, if I, um, I need to actually bake out this. So this is ACS over here. Um, I should probably go into a little more detail about how this works. Um, so I actually made this with ACS1, so now I have to do an automatic update on it. All right, so here are all the controls. Did all the animation in here. Um, then you can see the bones. Um, inside uh, Unity, I wish there was a way that we could actually bring down the bone count in um, ACS, because I think sometimes this may be a little too much because we have um, like arm twists in here. You'll get a really good animation out of these since there's an arm twist um, and like leg twists. Like, so if I go here, you can see like the actual wrist um, doesn't lose volume um, from the twist. Well, unless it's too extreme. Um, so I bring this back. Um, you can see like there's three bones basically, um, except for the, the lower leg. Um, so let's make a master file. First off, I'm actually not going to bake it because I'm just making a master. I'm going to export as. I'm going to bring it into Fera model. I'm going to call this underscore master. Save it. And then I'm going to open up. Oops, I'm sorry. I saved it as an LXO. I actually want to save it as an FBX. Oh, no, I did. Never mind. It's an FBX. So come back into Unity. Go into model. It just did a little import. I'm going to drag it into the scene. Click it. Puts it in zero, 0. I already have a material created for it. I'm going to drop it in. I have to go to the scene. Drop it. Drop it on the shoulder pads. All right. So now I brought in my master model. And we're going to go and clean up the master model because we don't want um, any... Uh, animations on it. So on import animation, I actually want to turn this off, hit apply. <clears throat> so now that we have the model in a T pose, well, it should be in a T pose. Let's see. Yeah, it's basically in a T pose. Um, it looked like it baked out a little bit, but that's all right. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to go back to the actual. Um, OK, so if you look down here, let me open this up a little more. Let's see if I can. All right. So this is the FBX. It brings in, unfortunately, the camera, uh, directional light. So if you have a bunch of other stuff inside of your file, um, it will actually bring it in. You don't need to have, um, you can actually kill a bunch of this stuff. So if I delete this, yes, yes, yes to all. Um, it will show that it's not there, but the UVs are still there. Um, it just has a problem because I deleted the um, the texture group. So if I export it again, and if I save it as an FBX over it, 
Yes. Saved it. Go back to Unity. Now it'll re-import that, and it'll be a much cleaner file. So if I open it back up, oh, never mind, did not. Actually, let me refresh on it. Oh, okay, so these are other things. Yeah, everything else is gone. These these need to be there. So if I click on it again, get rid of animation, click apply, go back to the rig, and then I'm going to create a generic, create from this file, and I'm going to pick the... Whoa, what's going on here? Okay, so that's not right. I'm sorry. Let me actually redo this because I think I actually messed something up. File. Revert. Yes. Revert to all. Okay, my apologies. Let me export this out one more time. I will not delete all that stuff. It doesn't really matter if you have that there or not. Um, it's just maybe little bits of kilobytes that's wasting. Call this master. Uh, James, we do have a quick question from yeah. the Pendulum Swing. What are your FBX settings? Oh, there are no FBX settings. Yeah. You just use the default <laughs> FBX settings, or are you actually using the LXO? The well, Moto doesn't come up with any FBX settings. Well, you can you can change the settings and in, in, in preferences. Oh, you can. Yeah, and OK, so then I just, I guess I don't change any of it then yeah no I guess I don't change anything so whatever the default is I see oh, you can actually change the huh. alright that's cool yeah. okay so they're the default FBX settings yeah, alright go for it man FBX. okay so I'm back in here um, change and go back to animation kill that okay so now it's back to normal um, I don't know why that destroyed everything. So when we go to the root node, we click on this, we click on the ferret character, and what that is is the actual um, root folder for the whole character. This holds the bones, it holds the mesh, and stuff like that. So this tells uh, Unity that this is the folder, this is the root, the absolute um, zero of like the model as far as hierarchy goes. I click Apply. Boom, got it. And so now we have this avatar right here. It's Rogue underscore master avatar. So this thing is what we're going to actually put on all the other animations. Um, so, okay, let's close this up. We have this here. Good, good, good. Uh, go back into Modo. I'm going to close these real quick just because they're all in my way. I'm going to open up idle animation again. Now I am going to export this animation. Okay, so here's my idle, scrubbing through it. Yep, exciting, idle. I'm gonna go to ACS, I'm actually gonna bake it. If we don't bake it, um, Unity or the exporter actually won't export the animation. You'll get basically nothing. All right, it's gotta bake. Give it a moment. Now, um, while it's doing that, I'm going to go back in animation, and I'm actually going to create a animation controller. Now, we're going to call this Farah controller. This will be how we set up all the animations for Farah. Um, if I go back to Farah Master, actually, let me kill this. I don't know what that is. Ooh. Kill that, go back to scene, drag the model back in, have the model, put the materials. Okay, so now in the actual root, uh, you can see um, all the stuff that was actually in the FBX that's down here. Um, you can actually go in here and clean this stuff up. I'm going to leave it alone for now just to not break anything. But whenever you bring in an FBX or LXO, whatever, whatever format you bring in, um, an animator will come with it. This is actually what controls the whole object. And that controller I just created, if we click on the little button, we can add that controller to it. 
So basically now this, this whole state, uh, finite state machine will actually be connected to this model now, but nothing interesting will happen because I actually don't have any animations going. So it will do absolutely nothing. So let's go back to Modo. Um, everything has been baked now. You can see it only shows the bones. Everything else is grayed out because it's not an ACS object anymore. So be careful. It looks like ACS2 actually creates a new file underscore backed or baked. Sorry. Um, so that is good. So we don't mess up anything. What I'm going to do is right click export as. I'm going to go in animation and I'm going to keep it in FBX. I'm going to call it idle. So Here's a neat little trick. First, I'm going to show you the wrong way to do it so you can kind of see what's going on. So I have ferrogue underscore idle dot FBX. Save it in animation. Go back to Unity. Go to animation. And then I have my ferrogue idle. I'm going to go to animation. We'll see that it's now idling. It's a subtle animation. But you're going to see that it's doing it. Pause it. I'm going to go to rig. I'm going to go to avatar definition. I'm going to do copy from other avatar. So now I'm going to copy the master so that we only have one avatar. So we don't have a bunch of avatars running around this thing. Um, I know James Cameron would like that, but not here. Um, so if you look in here, we have the animation file. Hold on, let me click apply. Um, you saw that the avatar disappeared from the idle animation, but You'll see that the idle animation that we brought in says take one for the animation file. Um, this, you know, I mean, you can go in here and you can rename it if you want. Oops, didn't mean to double click it. Actually, I don't think you can rename it. No, you can't. So what you do to combat this is if I go back to... If I go to the animation and I change... If I change that underscore to an at symbol and I go back into Unity, open it up, it'll actually rename the animation file to um, whatever is after the at symbol. So this is a good way of kind of keeping organized all your animations um, and then having Unity rename it automatically inside of it. Um, but you'll see that the avatar came back because we basically changed the file. So copy back to the master, hit apply. Okay, so now we have the idle. Uh, I'm going to go to animator. I'm going to drag the idle in. So now I have one animation inside there. So basically what's going to happen is once it starts, it's going to move over to idle. Um, since we don't have anything else and we don't even have any variables that are um, being controlled by a script, nothing really too exciting is going to happen except for Farrah just at idling. So if I hit play, she is not idling. Hmm. It's showing that it's going though. What happened? Normal controller. Did I turn that off? No, it's there. Um, let me check. Okay, so that's running. If you have any questions, ask me, Greg, while I'm trying to figure this out. We are watching. The only question we had was uh, what your name was. So <laughs> I <laughs> covered that one pretty well. Guard. Okay. James Guard. I was actually expecting you to go like, like kind of uh, um, like Victorian or something with that, like James of Guard, James of House Guard. Folder below for one. <laughs> he gives you no comment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he gave me some kind of weird error. I'm not sure what that is. All right. <sighs> okay. Let me bring in another animation file and export that. Something happened to that one. Have you ever uh, done an animation duel with someone else and then you animate in their general direction? 
Excuse me? <laughs> but I, I, I see where you're going with that, but I don't think anybody else does, Brandon. No, <laughs> like, no, they really don't. No, it, 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 it went along with your house. With the James of House Guard. Well, yeah. I, you say things like that. Um, I'm not making this, this stuff up. No. <laughs> no. No. Tangential, man. Captain Tangent. All right. Is bacon... All right, done. Export as. Go back to animation. I am going to change it to an at. So it renames it for me. Save FBX. Open it up. Okay, so now I have the run. It's got an avatar. Now I'm going to change animation to. First, I'm going to change it to a loop. Go to rig. I'm going to change copy from another avatar. I'm going to click master apply. Errors found while importing animation. Import message. I'll type it below somewhere. Oh, cannot find. Oh, I see what's going on. I see. Did it rename it? Okay, I see what happened. Uh, for some reason, the idle animation... Okay, so this brings up one of the problems with setting up uh, one of these avatars, is that the root... Let's see. Let's go back. Let's go back to the rig character. Okay, so now if I go back to the animation, click on one of these, check out where the root. Yeah, okay. So that's a problem. Uh, the idle animation, I don't understand how this changed between the same file, but you can see here that it says fair underscore hierarchy, and then the one that we exported earlier was fair underscore character. Um, so that's not going to work because what it's going to do, it's going to propagate all the animations based off of starting with um, fair underscore character. So it wouldn't even find it over there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kill this and I'm actually going to create a master from the idle since it seems like all of these are named exactly the same. Um, let's see, control D to duplicate. I'm going to, oh, I wish double click didn't do that. I'm going to rename this Master Master, just so that I know I'm going to create from this model. Hierarchy, apply. Um, now I'm going to go back to have Master Master there. Yep, OK. Now I'm going to click the fair controller. I'm going to go back to the other animations. I'm going to copy from another avatar. And now I'm going to go back to master master, apply, go back to copy, master master, good, good. So back to animations, apply, good. Um, I will have to put those stupid textures back on. Okay, so if I go to animator, new animations yet, I will have to go back and grab those animations out of here, drop the run forward. Now if I hit play, she will be running. Yay! Yay! Good job dealing with the troubleshooting, man. That is not easy to deal with during a demo. <laughs> no, it's not. It's very true. Really I have no idea. Honestly, I have no idea how it changed it because you saw it exported from the same exact file. When you're done with the demo, you'll know exactly why. Trust I, me. No, I won't. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what always happens. Like I'll be in the middle of the demo, like what's going on, and then afterwards, it's like, oh, it was like that one button that was for some reason invisible during during the demo. I had one thing clicked. Ah. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Um, but now I'm gonna go grab the other. Just close this. I'm gonna grab the sidestep. Run straight right. 
No to all. Ah, see, look, it's called fair underscore character here. So if I do bake, click OK. OK, yes. Is it going to change it? Let's see, if it doesn't change this to hierarchy, this won't work either. But I don't quite understand what I did. Yeah, see, this won't work because it's... Oh, no! Look at that, I renamed it. Huh, I don't get it. You did something to your files. I, I must have... I'm, I am claiming user error for now. No. <laughs> <laughs> user error! Okay. Well, whatever it is, it's all done. We understand the problem. And you're fixing it, and thanks for doing that on, on camera, because it's hard, and it's actually probably one of the most useful things for people to see. Yeah, no, I was sweating bullets. <laughs> Can't, it's a good, good thing there's not a camera on me. Um, hey, at least nobody stole memory out of your system that you're demoing on. I was at a trade show, and I was demoing on this one system, and I opened up Moto and Mari, and the whole system crashed. Not to desktop, just crashed the whole system. Oh my God. Yeah, and so they're scrambling around trying to figure out what's going on. And finally, somebody knew something about it because they're like, uh, let's open up the system and take a look inside. I'm like, why would we do that? And I opened it up, and it had four gigabytes of memory in it. Somebody had come into that, that booth that night before and taken out all the memory but four gigabytes. <laughs> like, it's just like, you've got to be kidding me. That is pretty awful. Uh, all right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put both of these windows side to side so we can see what's going on. Um, if I hit play, um, you'll actually see how Mechanim handles this. This is the animation. It'll kind of loop back and forth and just repeat because I changed. If I go back to my FBX file, you'll see that I did loop time. So if I turn this off and I click apply, it'll just run through it once and then just stop. Well, I guess I have to restart it. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I'm not even on the right animation. So it says default. If I play it. Now I'll just run through it and stop. So that's not too exciting. Um, let's change that back to loop. Um, apply. Um, it's going to be kind of hard to show you what's going on with this just because I don't have a script that's manipulating this whole tree. Um, but basically what I can do is I can just make it run through all of them and then move to the next one. So if I make a transition, um, actually I'm going to set this as default. So whenever it starts up, it starts up at this one. Um, I'm not going to start up with idle. You should start up with idle, but I'm not going to because it takes too long to run through that animation. So I'm going to go through this order. I'm going to right click, make a transition, go to run strafe, and I'm going to right click, make a transition, go to idle. So now if I click play, it's going to go through run forward, run straight right, and then go back to idle. Exciting. So it's just going to stay there forever. Um, and then what I could do, if I didn't want to do this, here, let me delete that link. Um, I can right click, make transition back, so that I can just have it going back and forth. So now you can see, you can also see, um, oh, I can't zoom in. Yeah, you can see the transitions and how they move back and forth. These can be edited, um, how these transitions work, um, to kind of like blend animations together, um, because you'll see they're not a hard um, transition, so they don't just pop into place. Um, this little buffer here allows one animation to move to the next animation, and so on and so forth. Um, I think... This is basically it without going into the nitty gritty of how you even control these. Um, there are variables that you can make up here. Well, I'd say it's a it's a good start. I think uh, if, if you're willing to do another webinar in the future, it would be great to build on top of it. But, it, you know, one of the things that Brandon and I have talked about after every one of these webinars is is how much material there is to go through and even with seven webinars it's almost it's it's impossible to get through it yeah, all there's yeah. a ton of stuff exactly and so you know these webinars served as a, a good starting point to get some basic information out there and we definitely like to you know have you come on and talk about taking this further and and really you know developing a fully articulated character um, but it would take a, you know a couple webinars to really be able to show that off
Yeah, we could even make a first-person shooter. <laughs> we could. I mean, I, I in, in my little Unreal test, I did make a Yazan chicken gun. It was pretty awesome. <laughs> yeah, Greg shot me with it multiple times. It was not fun. Yes, it was. It was lots of fun. It wasn't. It wasn't fun for me. I died. There was a lot of death involved. It was so was much fun. It's ridiculous how much fun it was. So. Uh, there's, a, there's something that's kind of like irking me out a little bit. Our pictures, Greg in the lower right hand corner of uh, of James' screen, it keeps on popping up my picture with a thumbs up. It makes me realize that Greg, you need an equally goofy picture. No, uh, I don't. So that we can, no, so that we can see, balance. That's, that's, the, whole, that's the whole point. No, it's it's not. A, uh, it's one of the few things that's not about balance. <laughs> See, Greg, Greg is just the default photo, the the, the nothingness photo. And I actually IMD. should have a, a photo. I had a photo up there. I don't know what happened to my photo. Yeah, where did it go? It's something, like it's like no one. Happened. Everyone just thinks you're a default. It's, I'm, it's crazy. I'm, I'm All right, super, super Moving default on. man. Yeah. James, you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think I'm just gonna go through real quick and show you ACS. Um, so this is the guide system for ACS. Basically, I'm just kind of outlining um, where all the bones should go. Um, unfortunately, Farah is missing a hand. Uh, I don't want to You've never explained to me why she's missing a hand. Does, does she have a hand in there, or is it no? She's got gone? a hand in there. I does mean, she? it's really okay. tight in there. And it's probably <laughs> a pretty sweaty hand. Yeah, I mean, there's air conditioning in there. Don't worry, she's okay. Oh, you just thought of everything, haven't you? Yeah, I have. <laughs> Um, so what's really nice about Lucas Rig is like if you have like an asymmetrical model like I do, you can actually turn off asymmetry. So now I actually have um, two guides to set everything. Up. Unfortunately, I have to place everything in roughly the same place for the parts that are symmetrical. I wish there was a way that you can kind of uh, have it to symmetry and then kind of break it after you like put everything in place so i'll have to go through this kind of stuff i'm not gonna do the fingers just because that's yeah maybe i will so i'm gonna move these into place So I got a question real quick while you're working. If, uh, yeah, shoot if it. That's cool. So um, uh, Fret Noise says, does having the animations in separate files have an advantage over exporting? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, let me go back into that real quick. So ooh, you can, um, you can like, so if I had the idle here, uh, I can actually break this file up into, oh, that's right. You can actually rename it in the actual, so I can call this whatever. Yada yada. So if I open this up, you'll see it's called something. Oh yeah, I have to apply first. Crazy. Um, and then let's say, let's say I had separate animations inside this idle. Let's say I had an idle first, and then I added another one. Let's call this one a run. Um, let's call this one a walk. And then I can go in here and I can actually be like, oh yeah, so. The run actually starts here, starts at frame 33 and ends at 52. And then I can go to walk and be like, oh, yeah, it starts somewhere down the line and then to 150. And then I can click apply. So this is how you would do um, breaking out animations inside of one file. Um, so if I go in here, you'll see that I have broken it out into three different ones in this in this one file. I personally don't like to do all the animations in one file because like, let's say, let's say I did that right now. Let's say I had uh, a walk cycle from zero to 30 and then I had a run cycle from uh, 31 to 60. And for whatever reason, I have an itch to like, oh, you know what? I want to make a longer walk cycle. I want to make it 32 frames. Right, so now any animation subsequently down the line has to get you know pushed over too, and then after you do that, then you have to go back into Unity, be like, ah, uh, hey Unity, by the way, I changed this, and you have to go change. So it's a lot of unnecessary management, I feel. So it's uh, it's interesting enough. People would oftentimes think like making more files would be more process intensive, but in this case, it well, actually is more efficient. 
Yeah, I mean, like, so if I had a problem with my run, I could be like, oh, yeah, screw the run. I'm going to... Or if I had, like, a bunch of variants of runs. Like, let's say I had, like, an anime. I was like, oh, make me, like, four different runs for whatever reason. And he's like, oh, all right. And then I go and look at them. I'm like, okay, cool. And then I can just dump whatever one I like the most inside there and just link to it. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It, it seems easier to have separates of things. You know, you wouldn't necessarily go and be like, hey, you know, I have like a model that has like a hundred different pieces of armor. And then you're like, oh, I'm just going to use one texture file for the whole thing. And I'm going to make it like a, a 160K map. You know, you wouldn't do that. Right. Right. Correct. No? You would you break it all out. Yeah, you, know, you would break here. it out into a bunch of pieces, you know, because that's better management. For like all the parts, you would name them all separately. What the whatever pieces they are. But it's or good actually, for you to clarify this. That you know, it's like yes, um, you can have them all in one single file, but you you think organizationally it makes more sense to break it out into separate ones. Yeah. And also, one of the big strengths with Modo is you can have multiple files open in one single session, and so yeah. you can bounce back and forth between these. Yeah. Or even like let's say you had like a bunch of animators. And you're like, hey, guys, I need one to do a walk. I need one to do a run. And so then you can't have them all working on one file, you know. So there that's you why you would also have, uh, you know, separated like that. Okay, cool. At least I feel. Okay. I mean, there's always situations where you would probably do the opposite. So you're laying out the locations for joints right now? Yes. Yes, okay. I am. And this is for ACS. I'm so used to Max right now. And this bear is with me. <laughs> yeah, this is something that uh, you know we, we probably will do. Should do a dedicated session on on you know oh, setting yeah, totally. up the ACS you know for your character or something like that. So plenty of uh, more topics to to talk about in the future with with more webinars. So these are kind of setting up the uh, how the foot kind of rotates around. Independent controller, just in, just kind of estimating. Yeah, I mean, I would I would spend a little more time on this if it, if I was being a little more serious. Now you're doing a good job of just setting it up real fast. It's good. Change the rain. God, I keep on dropping it like I'm in Max. Max is ruining my life. <laughs> you should be happy you get to play with Moto this this afternoon. Well, I usually get to play with Moto when I get home. But then remembering so many different pieces of software kind of sucks. Um, so obviously she does not have a jaw or eyes. Um, you can actually delete pieces that you don't need. Oh, no, no, no. Ooh, that's the wrong delete. Wrong delete, you want to do segment delete. Hmm. Okay, it takes a moment. Hopefully it doesn't crash. Ooh, that's scary. I don't know what's going on here. All right, still thinking. Let's give it a moment. Oh! It deleted and... everything. <laughs> I thought I didn't do that. <laughs> no, you did do that, but undo it. See if, See what happens. Oh, undoing ACS stuff is never a good idea. Okay. Yeah, because it's a lot of scripts. I just, I did it. I don't know what's happening right now. Yeah, there we go. Okay, well, yeah. Okay, so basically this is one of those situations where he deleted everything and now it's going to have to run through all the all the different scripts that are, are we're putting everything together. So hopefully that'll, that'll work out. Otherwise, we'll just, uh, we'll, we'll do another session on, on ACS dedicated after the fact. Yeah. Sounds good. Yeah. Sounds good to me. Okay, well, yeah, that was, you know, thank you for, for giving that a shot, though. That's, that is always a, a risky thing. Like, hey, let's go ahead and just try this out right now in the demo when it wasn't planned ahead of time. Um, but we'll, we'll go ahead and do a dedicated one in the future, and uh, if we can grab some more of your time, that would be uh, that would be pretty awesome, I think. Yeah, sorry I couldn't get this going. No, it's okay. No, it's just it's you, you did the, you, you broke the demo rule of uh, going off on a tangent in the demo on something. You're like, I didn't just practice this ahead of time. I'm going to go ahead and do it now live. But I actually do that all the time because it's kind of fun. And uh, it's nice if you'd actually give it a shot. So we'll go. We'll, Aha! 
It's oh, back. Okay. <laughs> Never mind. We're going. <laughs> All right. So it just went through a. I, I keep. You know, I didn't sleep much last night, and I keep on leaning towards saying things I shouldn't. <laughs> but right. uh, awesome. That's awesome. Good job. All right. So there we go. It's back. I'm getting rid of the fingers. We don't need fingers right now. Kill it. Yes. Okay. There we go. And no fingers. Awesome. Wow. I'm actually really surprised I came back. Yep. Hey. See, see how good this program is? Yep. Which uh, version are you on? Uh, oh, Moto mm -hmm. or Moto. Uh It's the newest one. 902. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, we've, you know, everybody's been raving about 902. Actually, you know what? I'm going to save it real quick, guys. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm going to do. All right. So if I go back to the actual controls, you'll see that it's like where the T-pose originally was. And so what you actually have to do is you have to bake down. So the guides are separate from the actual bones themselves. So these are just like guidelines to tell the rig how to reset itself up. Um, so then what we do is we do apply guides, click on that. Now all the controls are in the right spot, like per where I put it. Actually, you know, just to kind of mess things up, let's say I put like, I was a little drunk. Oh, that, that sounds night. like a when great idea. It. Mess things up. Yeah, go for it. I was, I was a little drunk. I put the arm out there. Let's see. I wasn't paying attention. We don't see that right now. All right. So now I'm going to click on the body itself. I am going to assign the bind mesh. Click OK. She's now a part of it. But if I start moving her around, oh, no, nothing's sticking. What's going on? Oh, we got to actually normalize the bind. Um, so that basically just goes and automatically puts weights on the actual vertices to the rig. So now she's connected. Yay. But then I'm like, oh, no, I'm such an idiot. I didn't put this in the right place. What am I going to do? Oh, I know. I can go back to the guide and I can go fix it. Put it back in place. Apply that. Ah, now it's in the right place. And it didn't mess anything up, which is amazing. I'm going to have to do a rebind, though. I'm not going to show you that because I might mess it up, and I'm going to break the illusion of this being an amazing demo. Okay. <laughs> well, no, actually, that, that, is, that, that was really pretty awesome for on the fly. And it, it's another yeah. one of those things that really talks to, like, you know why setup mode is awesome? This is why setup mode is awesome. And not to mention, like, I can actually click on the bones and see, oh, you know what? It looked like it did a pretty good job, even though it I was, was surprised off at, I was surprised at how good of a job it, it, it did overall. Just you know what? That one click. Screw I'm it. I'm going to do it. Yeah, no, go. it's good. Yeah, this This beautiful. is good. Yeah. Okay, I mean, we got to clean that up there, obviously. Not everything's for free. James, you demo maverick. All right, all right. Hold on a second here. Okay, <laughs> so I'm not done yet. I got to put this. I got to put the armor pieces on because those are, like, hiding somewhere. Um, the only thing I don't like about ACS is that you can only have one bind mesh. So I can't have, like, the arm separate from the torso, like, if I wanted to actually deform. But you can put millions upon millions of, uh, like, uh, rigid, rigid meshes. So, like, let's say I wanted to connect this shoulder pad to this bone, um, and then I'd do a attach select rigid. Click OK. And it went to the... Oh, that's right. Okay. Does it compensate? Nope. Okay. We're not showing that right now because I'm not sure... Okay. I'm not sure why that's trying to put it in nowhere land. Um, oh. Is it because of that? Okay, so what I'm going to do, okay, so I think it's having a problem that it, um, the mesh itself is off and somewhere else. Uh, yeah, you may need to reset your, you might yeah, need to so reset what, your centers or stuff like that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it, I'm going to move everything back to zero. That's the thing I love about Moto. Is I can cut something; it will actually stay in the in the same place that it was at, so that I can reset everything. Paste it, and I'm going to go back. I'm going to dump it on you again, 
and you're fine with it now. Okay. So that is actually something new that didn't happen before. I don't know what that's about. I don't quite like that. Um, but if I rotate it, you'll see that it's attached now. Awesome. Yay. Cool. And I think that's basically it. Yeah. Yeah, we can definitely go into Pharaoh into... would like to say goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> You might want to work on them animation skills, but no, that's awesome. <laughs> oh, I mean, I can only do so much. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. No, that was that was great, James. Thank you. And uh, yeah. and yeah, we'll talk some more about maybe a, a straight up like you know ground up ACS two setup video or something like that. I think people will definitely enjoy that. But thank you. That is that is completely awesome. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, no, really appreciate it. Thank you so much. And, uh, you know, we'll definitely uh, talk some more about this. And now we're going to talk about the super special presentation that we're talking about before. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop the stream and restart it because I need these to be separate videos because you guys who are in the webinar get to see this. It's not going to be saved on Twitch after the fact. I'm going to have to give it to some people in the company to go and post on our forums after the fact. But this is kind of like yeah. you guys get to see it before everybody else. All right, and uh, so let me just go ahead and stop this, and I'll restart it, and we'll show oh, you we'll right a back. small right. selection. Let me say goodbye. Yes, uh, James. i got to head back yeah. to work. Oh, okay. Thank well, thanks for James. doing this during work, man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah got to go back to that thing we call work. <laughs> W-R-K. Okay, thanks a lot, man. Right, and thanks, we'll James. talk right, to you later. Bye. Later. Right, see you, buddy. Okay, bye. we're restarting bye. the stream right now, everybody. Be right back.